Namaskaram. In this session, we will see orthogonal and orthonormal set. Also, we will discuss some of some of its properties. The solution of last homework. Okay, first one orthogonal set. A set of vectors in an inner point space is called orthogonal set if each vector in the set is orthogonal to every other vector in the set. Okay, for example, we consider okay, we consider an inner product space V and a subset S. Suppose S contains only three elements U1, U2, U3. And this set S is said to be orthogonal set when every vector in this set is orthogonal to every other vector. That means inner product of U1, U2 equal to 0 inner product of u1 u3 equal to 0 and inner product of u2 u3 equal to 0. Now this means u1 and u2 orthogonal, u1 and u3 are ortho is orthogonal and u2 and u3 also orthogonal. Okay, if u1, u2, u3 satisfies all these three conditions then we can say that S is an orthogonal set. Okay, for example check whether S is equal to x, y, z in R cube R ratio 3, we know that R3 is a inner product space with our uh, usual inner product or Euclidean inner product is orthogonal. X and X, Y and Z is given. So we have to check whether what about inner product of X, Y and what is inner product of X, Z and what is inner product of Y, Z. Okay, if all the inner products are zero, then we can say that S is an orthogonal set. And what about inner product of X, Y? Usually we consider Euclidean inner product. So what is the Euclidean inner product between x and y? That is 1 into 1 plus 1 into 1 plus 1 into minus 2. This is equal to 0. 1 plus 1 plus uh, minus 2 equal to 0. Okay. Similarly, what is x is z? 1 into 1, 1, 1 into minus 1, minus 1, 1 into 0, 0. That is also 0. Last one, inner product of y is z, that is 1 into 1, that is 1. 1 into minus 1 that is minus 1 minus 2 into 0 that is 0 so this is equal to 0. So all the inner products are 0 that means they are mutually orthogonal. So this given set is orthogonal set. So S is an orthogonal set. Okay. Okay next we are going to define another set that is called the orthonormal set. An orthogonal set first of all the set is orthogonal. An orthogonal set of unit vectors is called an orthonormal set. For example, as similar to the previous example, we consider a three element subset of, a, of an inner product space V. Then what is the condition for this set is orthonormal? First of all, S should be orthogonal. That means inner product of U1, U2, all these three inner products are zero. This means this set is orthogonal. Then orthonormal when orthogonal plus unit that means all the vectors should be unit so first this set satisfies this condition then second condition is all the vectors are unit unit means norm of u1 equal to 1 norm of u2 equal to 1 and norm of u3 equal to 1 okay so if a set satisfying these two conditions then we can say that the set is orthonormal so orthogonal plus unit Okay, and uh, what about norm of u1 equal to 0? How to evaluate norm uh, for a Euclidean inner product? Yes, by definition, this is equal to, or in general, how to evaluate norm using inner product, power root of inner product of u1, u1. So, this is equal to 1. Power root of inner product of u1, u1 equal to 1 means, what about inner product of u1, u1? That is also 1. It is a square of 1 that is equal to 1. Okay. So norm 1 equal norm u norm u1 equal to 1 is equivalent to inner product of u1 u1 equal to 1. Similarly, norm u2 equal to 1, which is equivalent to inner product of u2 u2 equal to 1. Clear. Okay, consider an example. Check whether S is equal to the same set as uh, problem number 3. Okay is orthonormal. From previous example, we know that this S is orthogonal, right? We know all the inner products are zero. So the set is orthogonal. Then it is orthonormal 
if it satisfies one more condition inner products of x y and z equal to 1 all the all the inner, all the inner products of all these elements are 1 then we can say that it is orthonormal so first we have to evaluate norm of x either you can evaluate norm of uh, norm of x or you can evaluate inner product of xx okay and by definition what is inner product of xx that is equal to 1 into 1 1 1 square plus 1 square plus 1 square that is 3 so inner product of xx is 3 so what is norm x the square root of inner product of xx clear inner product of xx that is equal to square root of 3 this is not equal to 1 so x is not a unit vector clear so it violates the second condition whatever be the y and z suppose uh, if they are unit that is not a matter because at least one of them is not unit okay orthonormal only when orthogonal plus all the vectors are unit here x is not a unit vector so it is clear that this set is not orthonormal but it is orthogonal okay okay uh, okay is another property of our uh, orthonorm orthonormality any orthogonal set of non zero vectors can be transformed into an orthonormal set by dividing each vector by its norm okay suppose we have a ortho orthogonal set then you can transform this to a orthonormal set by dividing norm of each vector okay so let us consider an example so consider s is equal to xyz x is equal to 1 1 1 y is equal to 1 1 minus 2 and z is equal to 1 minus 1 0 okay this is same as our previous set in last example so how to find norm x we already we have seen that norm x is equal to square root of 3 okay that is equal to square root of inner product of xx that is equal to uh, square root of 3 so how to find the corresponding orthonormal set by dividing the vector by its norm that means you consider x by norm x this vector is unit Similarly, you consider another set that is y by norm y and last one is z by norm z. Then this result says that this set is orthonormal. Okay, that's the idea. So in this example, norm x equal to root 3. Similarly, what is norm y? Norm y equal to square root of 1 square plus 1 square plus 2 square. That is square root of 6. And what about norm of z? That is square root of 1 square plus minus 1 square that is 2 okay then you consider the set x by norm x y by norm y z by norm y norm z that set is orthonormal because already they are orthogonal and uh, then we divide with its norm that gives all the, uh, that makes all the vectors are unit okay so this set is orthonormal set okay this is another function that is called uh, Chronicle delta. Chronicle delta defined by delta ij. I and j are in suffix like this. Delta ij. Okay. De chron uh, chronicle delta delta ij is defined by 1 if i equal to j. That means suppose you consider delta of 2, 2. Then it is 1. If i and j are same, two suffixes are same, then its value is 1. Okay. Suppose they are not same. Suffixes are not same, then its value is 0. For example, you consider delta of 2, 3. Now i is 2, j is 3, they are not equal, so its value is 0. This is the definition of this function, chronicle delta. Okay. Okay, with the help of chronicle delta function, we can write our orthonormal set as like this. Clear. A set of vectors uh, x1, x2, x3, xn is orthonormal if and only if inner product of xi, xj equal to delta ij. Why? Suppose uh, orthonormal means all uh, this set is orthogonal that means they are mutually they are mutually orthogonal so inner product of x1 x2 equal to 0 and inner product of x2 x7 equal to 0 all the inner products are 0 if suffixes are different that means they are mutually orthogonal okay that means this means what Okay, in terms of chronicle delta, what is inner product of x2 xj? x2 xj equal to, by this definition, 
by this definition what is x2 x7 delta of 2 7 right then what is the definition of delta if suffixes are not same and then then that is equal to zero that means if suffixes are different this inner product equal to zero because that is the definition of Kronecker delta suppose suffixes are same suffixes are same means so for example you consider x1 x1 then by definition this definition this is delta 1 1 and what is delta 1 1 by definition it is 1 then inner product of x1 x1 equal to 1 means what this means norm of x1 square this is actually norm x1 square norm x1 square equal to 1 norm x1 square equal to 1 means what about norm x1 that is equal to 1 because we know that uh, norm is always positive okay okay similarly uh, when suppose i n j equal to 2 that means inner product of x2 x2 that is equal to delta 2 2 by definition of Kronecker delta this is equal to 1 so inner product of x2 x2 equal to 1 means what that means norm of x2 y r equal to 1 but we know that norm is always positive so this implies norm x2 equal to 1 in this way we can show that all the xi's are units x1 x2 x3 x n are units so a set of vectors satisfying this condition then we can say that the set is orthonormal okay okay consider the result an orthonormal set an orthonormal set of a finite number of vectors is linearly independent okay so if a set is orthonormal then it should be linearly independent so first we consider an orthonormal set so for, for proving this result first we consider an orthonormal set that so we consider an orthonormal set x1 x2 x xn we have to show that this is linearly independent and what is the condition for independency we consider a linear combination c1 x1 plus c2 x2 etc plus cn xn equal to zero if this implies all the ca's are zero then we can say that this set is linearly independent okay okay so first we consider inner product of c1 x1 plus etc plus cn xn comma x1 okay and uh, by assumption these are assumption we assume that this set is uh, orthonormal and uh, next we have to show that it is independent for proving the set is independent we consider this linear combination equal to zero this is this is our present assumption okay so this become zero x1 right and what about this zero this zero is a vector zero because x1 x2 etc xn are vectors so their linear combination is also a vector so this zero means zero vector okay so we can write this as a scalar zero dot vector zero comma x1 right zero dot zero comma x1 and using the property of inner product what about the left hand side you can write left hand side as inner product of c1 x1 comma x1 plus c2 x2 comma x1 plus etc plus cn xn comma x1 equal to in right hand side again using the property of inner product this zero is a scalar we can take outside so zero into zero x1 these two are vectors so whatever be the value of this inner product we know the inner product is always real number so whatever be the value of this inner product this is zero into something so this is equal to zero this is our scalar zero right this is our scalar zero because both are real numbers so this is a scalar zero then again using the property inner product you can write this as c1 into inner product of x1 x1 plus c2 into x2 uh, x2 x1 plus cn into xn x1 equal to 0 and our assumption is this set is orthonormal so what about inner product of x1 x1 that is norm x1 square so this term become 1 clear so this become c1 into 1 plus c2 into what about inner product of x2 x1 this set is orthonormal so they are mutually orthogonal that means this inner product all the remaining inner products are 0 so 0 etc plus 0 equal to 0 so what is this this symbolizes c1 equal to 0 similarly you can show that all the ci's are 0 why next you consider instead of x1 x2 you consider the same same inner product instead of x1 you use x2 then after the simplification right hand side is same as like this left hand side become what happened left hand side is like this c1 into inner product of the first term is 
x1 x2 right and second time is c2 x2 x2 etc plus last time is cn uh, xn x2 equal to 0 so this is x2 okay then what happened similar to the previous case this equal to 0 all the remaining time 0 except second one this equal to 1 so c2 equal to 0 so in general if you use instead of uh, x x1 x2 you can use xj for xi where j equal to 1 to etc n then you can easily show that cj equal to 0 for all j equal to 1 to etc n so this so you can easily show so here it, this means that our c1 c2 etc cn all the scalars are zero if you assume if you, if we assume this condition this implies c1 equal to c2 equal to etc equal to cn equal to zero that means what that means this set is linearly independent clear so a set is orthonormal then that set is linearly independent that's it okay next one this is the important property of uh, orthonormal set if x1 x2 xn is a orthonormal basis for a vector space v that means this set is a basis together with the ortho orthonormality that means the vectors are orthogonal and unit then you can write x as inner product of x x1 x1 plus inner product of x x2 x2 etc plus inner product of x xn xn okay for any vector x in v that means we can write every vector we know that every vector is a linear combination of ba linear combination of basis elements and we can easily find that coefficients using this inner product that's a, a interesting property of orthonormal basis this proof is very simple for example we consider an arbitrary vector x and we know that this is a basis so every vector uniquely expressed in terms of basis vectors like c1 x1 plus c2 x2 etc plus cn xn this is possible this is true for every basis okay and uh, uh, in this in this result we have to show that what about c1 in this result we have to show that c1 is inner product of xx1 and similarly we have to show that c2 equal to inner product of xx2 like that okay okay so in general uh, our ck equal to inner product of xxk okay where k equal to 1 to etc so we consider inner product of xx xk and what is inner product of xxk we know we know that x, x can be written as c1 x1 plus c2 x2 etc plus cn xn this is possible because this set is a basis okay into xk and here we assume that k k can take 1 to up to n okay you can choose any value for k so by the definition of inner product you can write this as c1 into inner product of x1 x1 oh, sorry x1 xk and uh, second time is c2 in product of x2 xk etc plus cn into inner product of xn xk and uh, we have one more assumption this basis is a orthonormal basis since it is orthonormal what about inner product of x1 xk that is c1 into 0 if a not equal to 1 then c1 into 0 plus etc plus suppose it has a intermediate term that is ck into uh, xk xk okay ck into xk xk that is an intermediate term if both are k then its value is 1 or all the terms are 0 clear so this expression become 0 plus etc plus ck into 1 plus 0 etc plus 0 k may be 1 k may be 2 like etc okay so what is our conclusion inner product of x x k equal to c k and this is true for k equal to 1 to etc n so when k equal to 1 inner product of x x 1 is c 1 when k equal to 2 x x 2 equal to c 2 like that okay so every vector x can be uniquely expressed like this since it's a basis now it is clear that this we can replace this c1 by xx1 right and uh, this c2 by inner product of xx2 plus etc into x2 plus etc okay that's the result and this is the advantage of orthonormal basis uh, because suppose we have to find coordinate of a vector with respect to some basis then we know how to evaluate the coordinate 
to find the coordinate we have to solve n simultaneous linear equations okay we know uh, to find the coordinate of a vector with respect to some basis we have to solve n simultaneous equations okay if n is very large this is computationally highly expensive the solving simultaneous linear equations but in the case of orthonormal basis suppose we have an orthonormal basis then you can easily find the coordinate coordinate is nothing it is our scalar c1 c2 etc cn this is our coordinate okay so if it is orthonormal basis then you can easily find the coordinate using x x1 etc x xn so we sim we have to evaluate only n inner products instead of solving n simultaneous linear equation okay so this is the advantage of orthonormal basis okay thank you